Are you ready to get unshackled, literally unshackled from the job you no longer want to do and move into coaching full time? This video is for you. If you are ready to leave that old career behind, no matter how long you've been in it, say I retire and actually move into coaching in a more serious, professional, career-minded way, which means it's paying you career level money. I made this video series because too many women struggle for too long. They step into coaching, they learn some skills and skills are great, but sometimes we can limp along and struggle and it can seem confusing and overwhelming. And we're also often doing it while we have another job. And so if you are building a coaching business or plan to, in a way that is multitasking, as we women are so good at, this is especially for you because you actually don't have a lot of time to have this be mysterious. You need to figure out the fastest way to have the most effective coaching career that is high paying. And so if that is you, stay with me because in this video series, I'm gonna teach you the breakthrough strategies but it all started with the quiz, your superhero power quiz. And so if you haven't taken that quiz, make sure you do. I'm gonna dive deep into what that quiz means for you and your power in this video. And then I'm gonna continue on with more breakthrough strategies to demystify wherever you have been stuck in your coaching and get you to that coaching business more efficiently, more effectively, more joyfully, so you can have that date on your calendar that you say, I'm not going to that old job anymore. It's such a good feeling. But this video series is just the first part because I'm also going to be leading to a masterclass. We're going to put it all together for you. And I am doing this because I've just heard for 15 years from too many amazing, smart women coaches and they're stuck too long. It's become too confusing, too mysterious, too overwhelming to just take our skills and turn that into high ticket coaching, high ticket offers, actually making really good money with clients that you love and I have demystified it for you. So let's jump in. I hope you've taken the quiz. Again, if you haven't, go take it, pause the video, come back, and I'm gonna walk through the quiz results with you. Because where, where we start is your energy matters, who you are matters, how you come into coaching with all of your gifts and talents, and honestly, your energetic wiring really matters because we are different and we have different coaching energies, even though there's something similar about being a coach in that we are guiding people, inspiring people, helping people, sometimes healing people and bringing people through a whole process of meeting goals. But we have different energies. And so in the quiz, you found out whether you were Captain Marvel, Defender of the Cosmos, Shuri, the genius of Wakanda, or you were Wanda the Witch, the sorcerer of magic. And these are fun, but they're also really important because it means something about your most powerful source of energy. Why does this matter? Because as women, we are put in a box for most of our life. Our magic gets put in a box of rules and requirements and responsibilities and roles that we are supposed to play so that we are acceptable and that we do things the right way and that we don't ruffle other people's feathers. But when you come into creating your coaching career, you cannot create it the same way you created your past career. It just won't work. It's actually a recipe for disaster and absolute exhaustion. So some of the things that we learn in that box is this, and I talk about this a lot, is proving ourselves over and over by being extra smart, extra perfect, ex like learning extra, 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 preparing, preparing, preparing. And instead, we don't understand the way to do things that says, I actually don't have to prove myself. I deserve to be here and I am ready to go. And so letting go of some of those habits like proving and working too hard 
is so critical to creating this coaching career in a way that is more fulfilling, more energizing, more electrifying for you. So let's talk about you and who you are. And the first thing I need to know is what kind of answers did you have around your urgency? And so how quickly do you want to move into coaching or up-level your coaching so that it's the only thing that you're doing and you say goodbye, I retire to your old career? Because some coaches say, Margaret, I needed it yesterday. I needed it two years ago. I can't go another day in this old job. It's exhausting me. It's draining me. And it honestly, it's getting in the way of creating my coaching business. This is really important to understand first. I call that being on warp speed. Like your mode has to be warp speed. And in that situation, it is even more important to do things the fastest easiest way, the most clear way so that you get instant results, instant up leveling, instantly more money and seeing the path to how you're going to continue to earn really, really well. So over this series, you're going to pay real close attention to my next video on the blocks you need to clear in order to really own this energy second video on who are the most motivated paying clients there is no mystery about that i've done the demographics i've done the research i am going to tell you so you stop wasting time there in the third video when i talk about the kinds of breakthroughs you have to be able to bring for clients so that they don't get stuck which makes you feel like you're stuck Okay, some coaches tell me, well, Margaret, if I at least had a one-year plan, like I am counting down the days, a six-month or a one-year or even a one-and-a-half-year plan, I can live with that. I can ramp up my coaching while I ramp down my past career. And that's great. That means your mode is counting down to a launch, right? You're counting down the days. But in that case, it's really important to see the framework, the strategies that you are going to use to make sure that when you arrive at that day that you want to leave your old job, you have everything in place. It's not going to be perfection. You can't wait forever. You can't tweak it and learn forever. You need to have a structure and a plan in place and the energy to make that plan happen for your countdown. Now, the third w uh, way is sometimes people say to me, hey, Margaret, I'm just looking around, right? I am just sightseeing here. And that is great. You're welcome to watch this video series. You're welcome to come to the masterclass. It's just that it's not going to feel um, like it's really designed for you. And that's okay for where you are in your journey. We really are here to help you. If your energy is telling you, this is more urgent for me. I needed it either yesterday, warp speed, or I am at least on a countdown. You're going to absolutely love the information that we're giving you here. So now that we've clarified where am I in my urgency, we come to your quiz results. So let's talk a little bit about Shuri, the genius of Wakanda. And so with your quiz, you got a little bit of a handout, but I want to touch on some of the highlights here because you have a characteristic, what I call your, your feminine leadership energy that you use in your coaching that really has the flavor of the wise sage archetype. So let's look a little bit at Siri, right? Siri possesses an extraordinary mind. She always has a plan. She is the smartest of all the superheroes. Yay, you. <laughs> she thinks with lightning speed. She always sees the big picture. She has the plan. She has the strategy. She has the devices and the tactics. She loves to improve. And because of that, she has this amazing vision to see her clients um, or for you to see your clients, to see the bigger picture of where they're stuck and what they might need and how we can tweak this and how we can improve this. And this is an amazing gift. However, it comes with a downside. And this is the box that our old career puts us in. Are you ready? The downside of being having such an amazing mind and being so focused on 
perfection and improving and doing things the right way and the best way, which I love. I have so much of that. The downside of that, the Achilles heel, or as we say in superhero world, the kryptonite for you, is when that amazing mind turns on you and is always saying, I'm not there yet. I should know it better. I should be doing better. I should have figured this out by now. I should know how to do this. I shouldn't need help. I should be smart enough to get this. And we move into a mode of proving ourselves over and over and over. It's like, for sure, you are in competition with yourself. And it's all about, did I do my best? Have I proved yet that I am worthy of charging more money or putting myself out there? And so the fear, because of that critical mind, will come up as, what if I'm a fraud? What if I step into coaching in a bigger way and I find out that I'm not as smart as I think I am, that I am missing something big, that people look at me and challenge me and maybe I am a fraud. And that inside of me, nobody knows it's happening, mental swirl is a hugely depressing energy. Now, it doesn't look like a depressant energy for you because it spurs you into more action, more doing, more perfecting, more thinking, more analyzing. So it looks like an energizing energy, but it's actually a depressing energy because it depresses that willingness, that courage, that enthusiasm, that joyful leaning in and doing something new, even if it's the first time and it's a messy first try. And so we come into that beautiful uh, Shuri energy when our mind reminds us that we are always unfolding. We are always moving forward. There is no perfection. Actually, perfection is boring. And we are able to get into action with support with the support of others so that we aren't doing it on our own, figuring it out what, why we haven't gotten there yet. And we actually have others' amazing minds to give us that feedback of where we actually are, what we actually deserve, what we actually need to hold on to for I don't have anything to prove. I have earned it and I'm ready to go. And that is such an amazing energy. You make an unbelievable coach with this energy because of your ability to see your clients where they are and give them the best strategies. But it's all about allowing yourself to come forward with a bigger leadership energy that doesn't need to be perfect first. There's lots of other amazing archetypal um, energies in this same Shuri energy. Um, let me tell you about some of them because they're so amazing. And we have some of these on your handout, but I really want you to let this in, right? And so other wise sage archetypes are Athena, right? The, the genius archetype, um, Wonder Woman archetype, Georgia O'Keefe, Margaret Thatcher, Marie Curie, Jane Goodall, Billie Jean King. These are other powerful archetypes, teacher archetype, mentor archetype, guide, wise sage guide archetype. This is a super powerful leadership archetype for being a coach. It's one of the, the best ones to have. And you need, uh, if you have this energy for sure, you need to allow yourself to launch because you can help so many People, it is awesome. Okay, and so let's talk about the Captain Marvel energy. So this is a very different energy. If you have come up as Captain Marvel and maybe your secondary energy is Shuri, but Captain Marvel really feels like your main energy, well, you're wired in a different way. This is more of the warrior energy or the mama bear energy. It's a bigger, fuller leadership energy and it's full of passion. So let's talk about Captain Marvel. Your Captain Marvel energy means you are pure energy that's driven by passion. There's a fearlessness and a freedom in who you are and what you wanna do. 
um, your energy is so into advocating for others, empowering others, inspiring others that they can do anything. Because one of the funnest things for you is the thought that you can do anything, that you can do great things. Um, but what's interesting is the ability to be both strong and incredibly vulnerable at the same time. And that makes for a coach who is not only encouraging, but is inspiring at the same time. Now, you can also have an amazing mind. You can also love to study and learn and do things right and have all of the strategies. You can also get stuck in perfectionism. However, you will do those things if it's the best way for you to win. And so unlike Shuri, for you, it's less about the perfection of it all, unless the perfection allows me to win, to do something bigger, to be something bigger. So at the same time, she could you could switch gears on a dime and say, I'm just gonna go all in with passion and do a big messy try and see what happens. Because it's all about doing something big, all about doing something amazing. It's a moving forward energy. And because the energy is so big, it also has a big Achilles heel. Now, as women, we are put in a box that we are supposed to be smaller and be more accommodating and not push anyone's buttons. And this is a really hard box to be in when you have this big energy because it, it completely restricts and, and goes against all of the rising energy that you want to have to be as big and as free as you want to be. And so the Achilles heel is the same side of battle that you are willing to go in to advocate for others becomes our weakness when it's turned against us. And so here's how that happens. Anytime as a coach, you start to feel overwhelmed with this process of building your business, um, and if it starts to feel like this is never going to happen, I just can't win. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not really a coach. Maybe I'm just a loser. We start to get stuck and our energy starts to get depressed and the battle turns into self-attack. And those are the words. It's I'm a loser. It's not I'm not smart enough yet. There's no middle ground between am I a superhero or am I just completely broken and I'll never get this. And so it's a big energy swing when we go into battle. And sometimes it's battle with other people, but often, so often, it's battle with ourselves. And in our inner self-talk, it is very, very personal. It is all about whether or not we are a loser and we are broken and we are irredeemable versus I want to be this amazing force in the universe. And so when that happens and we go into that battle with ourselves or with God or with the universe or with other people, again, we have a depressing of energy and that depressing of energy can cause us to both spin in our head like the Shuri superhero archetype, start thinking and analyzing too much. But it also causes us to, um, to be in battle with any kind of structure, with our own goals, to be in battle with all the strategies that normally work for us, to be in battle with people who wanna help us by pulling away and isolating and saying, I'm not even worth it, I'm not even gonna get engaged. And so we start to depress that energy and it turns into refusal energy. So what we become really good at, instead of fighting and moving forward is, oh, I'm really good at resistance and refusal. And imagine you're trying to build your coaching business and you get very excited and then all of a sudden you start hitting roadblocks or you start uh, multitasking too much and honestly, it's not working and your energy starts to get overwhelmed and frustrated because you can't get what you want to create. That is such a big danger zone. And it makes so many coaches go on this roller coaster of spits, like starts and fits, right? Where we get started and then we sort of pull it all back and get really, really frustrated and wonder if it's ever really gonna work. 
And that is not the fastest way to build a business, just like perfectionism isn't. It means that instead of staying on the steady track, we're going up and down, up and down, getting stuck, going into battle, sometimes wondering if we should even just give it all up altogether. And of course, people around us have a hard time supporting us when we go into battle with ourselves. And so having this really big energy and knowing how in the, the most of our lives, especially in our professional careers, we had to kind of keep it under wraps. We had to keep it silently within us, all of this back and forth, this battle inside of us, all has to be contained. This is not the way we wanna build our coaching business. We wanna build it full of that freedom, full of that passion, full of that doing something big and minimize the dips that we go into when we get frustrated or overwhelmed. And that's why I've got a second video coming for you to help, uh, it's a different kind of assessment to see what are the biggest blocks that you need to clear to stay out of your pitfalls, out of these Achilles heels and stay in that powerful creative mode. So that's one aspect of creating your business faster, the energy you're showing up in. So let's move on and talk about Wanda, the Scarlet Witch of Magic. And so Wanda is very interesting because she is the healer archetype and her energy becomes stronger or became stronger because of the experience of her great losses, the loves, the heartbreaks that she has lost. And in her heart, she holds this space of both great pain and great capacity to love, to feel and to love. And from that springs forth magic. And so she is the honest healer energy, the pure healing of the heart that can teach the whole world what it means to feel both pain and joy, to see both beauty and light and love and see its opposite and know that holding ourselves in the energy of love is really what it's all about in the end. And so this is a magic healing through the heart, through love. And it's a different kind of energy. It's a fierce loving energy, but it's not a battle energy. The last thing she wants to do is battle. The, what she wants to do is manifest and create and bring magic to the world in people's hearts. She will battle if she has to, but it's not what she wants. She wants to bring people into love, into experiencing love and the pure radiant field of love. Even if she's helping someone meet a marketing goal or a business goal, through that process, they're gonna have such a heart healing, they won't recognize themselves in the end. And so the Achilles heel for this energy is it comes with great sensitivity and great feeling and great big lion heart that can get really hurt and really broken and knows what trauma feels like. And so the Achilles heel is always becoming overwhelmed with all of the pain in the world, overwhelmed with all of the strife in building a business and overwhelmed with the feeling of, I shouldn't be this sensitive. I should be able to do it like someone who is Shuri. That's what we've been told our whole lives. Your feeling gifts, your heart, your magic isn't really a gift, it's a weakness. And therein is the biggest Achilles heel for this, this magic witch energy. When we think our biggest gift that we are born with, our magic, is actually a weakness, we spend our whole careers trying to be someone else, trying to be super perfect or trying to be super strong. And all of those things are a painful, eventually collapsing energy for the Scarlet Witch. And so we go into habitual or, or uh, rounds of feeling really good and then having total collapse, feeling exhausted, feeling drained, feeling like it's just impossible. And that 
sadness, that grief, that sort of frustrated, angry tears can come out in little little and big explosions of power. But they're not about um, forcing something. It's more about feeling the pain of what it's like to end up feeling abandoned again, alone again, like you don't fit in this world because your gifts are not the gifts that people value. And so imagine trying to build a business as someone who has this kind of heart, this kind of deeply feeling sensitive energy, this kind of healing and coming up again and again around strategies and disciplines and time frames that say I, there's one way to do it and I have to push and force and discipline myself and stop feeling so much to get there, we'll end up creating a coaching business um, really for all three of these energy types, end up creating a coaching business that is more like our past career with all the things we didn't like about it. And so we really need to use that energy, that self understanding to know that we need to create a business that is radiating with love and that builds in the gifts of sensitivity of uh, care and compassion so that we aren't the uh, we aren't standing there as the coach who says I can help you um, work in a way that is brings healing and self-compassion and love and joy along the way while I burn myself out and have adrenal fatigue and exhaustion right and so knowing that is our energy means we build a business in a very very specific way there's some other amazing archetypes in here. And again, I'm not reading them all. You have them in your handout. Um, for Captain Marvel, of course, we have Black Widow, we have Durga, we have Serena Williams, we have Mulan, we have Katniss Everdeen, uh, we have Oprah Winfrey. And in the Scarlet Witch archetype, we have Kuan Yin, we have Goddess Aphrodite, we have Gaia. We have Michelle Obama, we have Maya Angelou, some of these deep feeling poets. We have Mary Oliver, another poet. This is really the wounded healer archetype. And so really feel into some of these other archetypes as well, because it gives you a structure for something that we just don't often think about. My special type of magical leadership energy that I bring as a coach, because I have found that when coaches lock in on their flavor, their archetypal flavor of the, of the leadership energy they bring, it allows us, it gives us permission. It opens something up to lean in more strongly to that energy and allow yourself to build your business with that instead of the old roles, instead of the old things that we have to do in ways that we have to be, we have to not only unshackle ourselves from our job, but we have to unshackle ourselves from the roles that we've played and the way we've done things in the past to build a business that we absolutely love. And that is there to serve us, to serve our passion, to serve our life purpose. And so make sure you join me on the next video in this series, because I'm going to talk about a different kind of quiz or self-assessment to really get clear on what are some of the blocks you have in you that are game changers. Like they will get you stuck. Even if you love what I'm saying in this video, those blocks in you that will stick in your way that will come up, that will block you, that will create a disaster instead of the business you love. We wanna be so clear about those inner blocks so we know what inner work that we have to do. And yes, it takes inner work to create a business that we're gonna love. And that allows us to be the person that we want to be in that business. So stay tuned for the next video. And then the video after that is really, we get into this strategy 
of who are the most motivated paying clients. I'm going to give you six characteristics and that is all you need to know. When you focus on those people, they will pay your prices and they will absolutely love you. And then our last video in the series before the masterclass, I'm going to talk about the types of breakthroughs that all clients need, no matter what kind of a coach you are, so that they never get stuck in procrastination. They never get stuck not knowing why they won't go for their goals. And it's also the same kind of breakthroughs we often need. So I can't wait to teach that to you as well. And again, it's all leading to my, my masterclass training that we'll be doing live. We'll have dates for you there and I will see you on the next video.